Hello, this is the introduction to the Fan Performance Lab. Uh, in this lab, we have a centrifugal fan that's instrumented with pressure uh, taps upstream and downstream of the fan so that we can measure the pressure differential across the fan. I suggest that you follow along in your lab handout as we go along. I've drawn a schematic of the fan on the board here to show you what we're talking about. This would be the centrifugal fan here. We have a, a pressure tap located here at P3, and we have one here located here at P4. We measure the difference between these two pressures, and that gives us the pressure rise over the fan. Uh, we control the fan flow rate with a slider plate that's located up here. And you'll see in the lab that it's incremented in 0, uh, 20, 40, 60, and 80, and 100 percent of the flow. Now, when you do your analysis, you're not going to use those percents. You're going to use the actual flow rates. We're also going to need the um, velocity, or we actually need the flow rate coming into the fan. And the way we get the flow rate coming into the fan is over here we have a nozzle. And the nozzle is also instrumented with the pressure tap. And the nozzle has a contraction section here, so as the flow comes through, the pressure decreases. And we can measure the difference between the flow or the pressure at the nozzle and the pressure right in the room. And using Bernoulli's equation, we can get the flow rate. I'll show you that in just a minute. Now, to measure the pressure, we use a set of uh, manometers. They are liquid-filled manometers. And this is not a great diagram, but uh, uh, you'll see it when you get to the lab and also in the lab demo in just a minute. We have tubes that are filled with manometer fluid. Okay, they're connected to the different pressure taps. There's one that's open to the atmosphere in the room. In fact, there's a whole bank of them that are open to the atmosphere. There's one that's connected to the nozzle. There's one that's connected to P3 and one that's connected to P4. Okay, as the, now in this case, the higher the pressure, the further down it pushes the fluid because we have a reservoir down here. So, for example, P atmosphere, will naturally be greater than P nozzle. So it's going to, we're measuring, if we measure the difference between these two, it pushes it down further. And we're going to measure the difference in heights here to measure the difference in pressure in the, um, at the nozzle and the atmosphere. And we do the same thing over here with the uh, fan. Okay, now in order to get the pressure, we just use the hydrostatic equation. The difference in pressure between any two points is equal, in this case, to the density of the manometer fluid times g, gravity, times the difference in the height. Okay, this is the difference in the height of the manometer fluid. Okay, but what we're, we're ultimately want to get is head. Okay, well, in your, fan, uh, in your pipe loss lab, we measured head directly by measuring the difference in the height of the fluids. But here, because the fluid is air, we can't see it. We have to measure it some other way. So we're going to measure pressure and then convert that to head. So remember, the head, which I've written out here, is just equal to delta P divided by the density of the fan fluid and gravity. Okay, this is not the manometer fluid. This is, the, in our case, this is air. Okay, well, then the, we have to substitute in our expression for delta P. So the head is equal to the... In the numerator, we have the density, so it's density, I mean the pressure, so we have the density of the manometer fluid times G times delta H of the manometer fluid. In the denominator, we have the density of the air times gravity. So ultimately, the head is the, ratio, is the uh, density ratio of the manometer fluid to the air times delta H, the delta H, which is the difference in the height of the fluid. Okay, in order to get the flow rate, I said we're going to measure the difference in pressure at the nozzle. So we come over here and we use Bernoulli's equation. And I've written Bernoulli's equation on the board. We have the P atmosphere, meaning P out in the room, plus one half rho via the room velocity equals pressure at the nozzle plus one half rho V at the nozzle squared. Well, we're going to measure pressure in the room very far away from the nozzle. By measuring it far away from the nozzle, the velocity is zero at that point. So if we rearrange this equation, we get the velocity at the nozzle is just equal to the square root of 2 delta P over rho, and that's rho of the air in this case. 
Okay, in order to get the, now what we don't have at this point is the density of the air. To get the density of the air, we use the equation of state, where density is equal to P over RT. To get the pressure in the room, we have to use the barometer, which is on the wall right next to the fan performance apparatus. And then there's also a thermometer attached to that barometer, and so we get that from the, that thermometer. The flow rate is just equal to the velocity at the nozzle times the area of the nozzle. Well, we're given the diameter of the nozzle, so that would be pi d nozzle squared over 4 times uh, the uh, 2 delta p over rho, the velocity. Okay, well, let's move on to the uh, report requirements. Page one of your report requirement is, again, as always, to write a letter to your TA discussing the experiment. There are four uh, paragraphs. Should follow the format shown in the letter format and frequently asked questions document. Be very clear. Be very straightforward. Do not be wordy. Read it several times. Ask yourself, does this sentence have to be here? If not, take it out. Don't have any unnecessary words in there. Be very, very careful. Be careful with your spelling. Be very careful with your grammar. Okay, page two. Ask us to, uh, you're, you're to determine the head rises at six different rotating speeds and plot the head rise versus flow rate. So we're going to make measurements at six different RPMs. We're going to measure the head rise at six different RPMs. And then we're also going to uh, measure that head rise at each RPM for six different flow rates. So when you're done, you should be able to, you'll have a set of data. You should be able to construct a graph that looks something like this. There's going to be one graph on page uh, two. And on it, you're going to have your six RPMs with the uh, head rise associated with each one. Okay, so I've drawn sort of a sample one up here where we have flow rate on the horizontal axis, head rise on the uh, vertical axis. And so, for example, this would be uh, 1,500 RPM right here. So we have six data points corresponding to six different flow rates. And remember, that's not 0, 20, 40, 60, 80 percent. It will actually be in meters cubed per second. And then we'll have one curve for each of the RPMs. You'll also have uncertainty bars on each one of these sets of data point. Now, I've only drawn it for the 3,000 RPM case, but uh, you'll have it for each one. Okay. Uh, page three. Let's move over here. Page three asks for you to plot uh, the brake horsepower and the water horsepower uh, for each data point. Okay, now it's going to get kind of busy here if we put every th all the data on one graph. So what I've asked you to do is put it on two graphs. We'll have the three lowest RPMs on one graph and then the other three RPMs on another graph. So on this graph, we're going to plot brake horsepower and water horsepower for each uh, data point and we'll draw a line through it. So for example, you could maybe uh, use these dashed lines for the brake horsepower and the solid line for the water horsepower. Or no, I've got that backwards. The uh, brake horsepower would be the solid line and the water horsepower would be the uh, dash line. Okay, so plot that for the six RPMs for each data point and you're going to do that on two graphs. They should, the two graphs should be on one page. Page four asks us to determine the fan efficiency at six different rotating speeds and plot an efficiency curve. Okay, so we use the Greek letter eta for efficiency and uh, we'll have flow rate down here and that'll be in some volumetric flow rate. Okay, now we've got lots of data here. 
If your data, you're going to calculate the efficiency. I don't know what yours is going to look like. If yours looks like what's in the book, you'll get a curve something like this. But there's no telling what yours is going to look like. Uh, so whatever you get is what you get. And apply it like that on one graph. All right, page five asks us to calculate the annual cost for operating the fan when the valve is at its fully open position, meaning 100%, for each rotating speed. So you'll have um, six uh, data, or you'll have six costs. It says assume that the uh, that it operates 2,800 hours each year, and the current GRU uh, rates are nine cents per kilowatt hour. And it says, assume that the motor efficiency is 80% for all conditions. Okay, well, that means you're going to have to look up the definition for water horsepower, and you've re actually already done that in that graph over there, and you want to see how that um, water ho horsepower relates to flow rate. Then you're going to have to find out how much brake power is required to get that water horsepower. Then you've got to find out how much electrical power is required to get that brake horsepower. So the electrical power is what you're paying for. So you take that electrical power and you multiply out by the time that the fan is operating and that will give you the energy that you've bought from the power company and you just multiply that times the nine cents per kilowatt hour. Remember what you buy from the power company is not power, you're buying energy and it's um, specified in kilowatt hours. So whatever you get will be in kilowatt hours and you're paying nine cents per kilowatt hour. So please tell us the uh, cost for the six different RPMs at its maximum flow rate. Okay, page six. This page is for your experimental data. Okay, this does not have to be the data that you wrote down in lab. It might be kind of messy that when you did it in lab, it's okay to type it up and put it in a table Include that with your lab, the, uh, the original data. And then finally, on page 7, I'd like you to uh, include your sample calculations. And this could take more than one page. You're not limited to one page. But whenever you do a sample calculation, you need to write out your equations in a nice linear, linear fashion. Uh, include your numbers, include your units, and show how all the units cancel out when you write your sample uh, calculation so that we can follow along. Also reference any equations. If you use, for example, equation 14.1 from the book, just write over there, equation 14.1 from single and symbolic. Okay, I'd like you to do the, so you need to show a sample calculation for each calculation you do in your spreadsheet. Uh, also, you need to show how you did your uncertainty analysis and then do one sample calculation for your uncertainty analysis. And you can also use the sample calculation to check your equations in your spreadsheet to make sure that you typed everything in right. Okay, now we're going to begin the demonstration of the, la of the uh, fan performance apparatus in the lab. Thank you. Hello, I'm Kyle Lyons. In this video, I hope to show you how to use the centrifugal fan module and also the Versatile Data Acquisition System software, or VDAS for short. This is a drive motor. It drives the impeller at a one-to-one -one ratio. As the impeller rotates, it takes air from the inlet and flings it out radially through the outlet. The fluid gathers in this roll and exit at areas of lower pressure mainly the exhaust here, but some of it does recirculate back through the gaps in the scroll into the inlet of the impeller once again. Before air exits the exhaust here, it passes through a specially shaped and incremented slide plate. This allows you to control the airflow through the exhaust by the percentage of the area open. This panel here powers and controls all the components of this unit. The power is turned on here, and it takes a few minutes for the sensors to get to a steady state. So if it's not switched on right away, go ahead and turn it on when you arrive at lab. This button here will start the motor, and its speed is controlled by slowly adjusting this dial. 
The readout for the RPM, torque, and total power used are right here on this LCD. The pressure gauges are on this panel here. Each of them connects to a pressure tap on the unit. P1 is here at the nozzle, P2 just before the impeller, and P3 just after the impeller. They all read out here, and you can zero those values by pressing and holding this button while the unit is turned off. Before you begin, check to make sure that all of these lines run to the correct pressure taps, and there are no kinks. The software here should be installed on your system before you come to lab. It's called Virtual Data Acquisition System, and it can be downloaded from Tech Equipment. The web link is in the procedure write-up. I have the VDAS software installed on my computer and have it connected using a USB cable. Before you can record any data, you must initialize your connection with the VDAS by clicking this button. Once it has connected, you'll see values for sensors on the virtual instrument panel. A checkbox next to a value means it will be recorded when requested. You must set the test conditions for each recording set to accurately reflect the test before being performed. If you fail to do this each time, the calculated parameters will be incorrect. Since the values fluctuate slightly, even at steady state, you should take multiple data points for each slide position. This can be done best with the Timed Data Acquisition tool. Set the duration and increment as instructed in the procedure. You can verify data is being recorded by pressing the View Recorded Data button. It will display a table for the most recent data series recorded. The pull-down menu allows you to cycle through previous series. As with all software, I recommend you save your work periodically. I haven't had any glitches with VDAS, but you will be pressed for time and it is much easier to save often than repeat the procedure next week. That wraps up the centrifugal fan module and software system. You should now be prepared to complete the lab as described in the procedure. Thank you.